In this video, we look at interactions between short duration weather patterns and building environmental controls. Many simulation working practices include early testing of buildings against a range of classic weather patterns. For example, many of the response characteristics of a building environmental control system that includes night or weekend setbacks are quite clearly revealed during a Monday morning warm-up after a very cold weekend. Two other classic winter scenarios are extremely cold, sunny, calm conditions and moderately cold, cloudy, but high wind conditions. These stress different thermophysical paths within the building and observe observation of these stresses can give us powerful clues as to the improving building performance. We'll explore various techniques for identifying such weather patterns. We'll use ESP modules to demonstrate the process for you, but you could implement them in other simulation suites. This is one of many exercises within strategies for deploying virtual representations of the built environment. Links to the website and related sections are shown. If you have not already seen it, check out a quick tour of CLIM. This video reviews a number of CLIM facilities and reporting options. For the Monday morning cold start, we want a sequence of cold days long enough for the heat from the prior weekdays to have dissipated over the weekend. And while we're looking at that, what else might be of interest? How different is the Monday environmental control pattern from that of the prior Friday or from the subsequent Tuesday and Wednesday? A Thursday to Thursday assessment would provide actually much more information than a focused Saturday to Monday assessment. And with that in mind, let's also check that the cold period is followed by several consistent days of weather. The cold clear and cloudy windy weather patterns also need to be long enough to, for performance implications to become clear. Consider this graph. After a brief cold calm period, both wind and temperatures rise for at least a week of mild winter conditions. Of course, not all sites have such clearly demarcated patterns. For purposes of this exercise, let's invoke the ESP CLIM module and select Copenhagen from the list of available sites. Take a moment to consider how you might approach the task. Jot down your ideas. And when you've done that, restart the video. The following pattern is using a similar one to the Quick Tour of Klim video. We'll start with a graphic exploration of temperatures over the year and gradually focus on shorter periods until we locate likely periods. After setting the period in the interface, let's look at temperatures. We see over the year temperatures ranging from minus 9 to 26 degrees. The summer is brief. There are three extreme cold periods. The spring is quite long, rises and falls several times as it progresses. Let's investigate the cold period during the sixth week of the year. This view indicates a cold period is roughly a week long. Let's add direct solar radiation to the graph. There are four sunny days during the period. 
Now let's add wind speed to the graph. That's drawn as a gold line. We see that the latter three days have a low wind speeds, and the following milder days have a higher wind speed and little or no direct solar radiation. So an assessment from the 8th or 9th until about the 15th would capture the range of performance patterns discussed earlier. If this cold period didn't happen at a weekend, we could shift it by the simple expedience of redefining the year of assessment. What's that about? Well, look at this example of a 2001 calendar. January the 1st happens to be a Monday. The year 2004 begins on a Thursday, effectively shifting the cold sequence forward three days. So we discovered a period in February. What about January? There are a couple of days in late January that seem to fit. There's also a brief cold period around the 10th of January. What about March? The 7th through the 12th are clear, but moderate in wind and temperature. The 13th through the 18th has low direct solar radiation, but higher wind speeds and is gradually warming. And that might come in handy. The last few days of March have a mix of wind speeds and radiation, and the, but the ambient temperature ranges quite a lot from minus 5 to 6 degrees. That might be a good period if we're interested in seeing how a building copes with significant fluctuations. Essentially, conditions in Copenhagen are often in flux with rapid transitions and few long settled periods. So how might these patterns impact building performance? Let's find out. We will use a small office building that is distributed with the SPR. A few changes will be required to link it with the Copenhagen weather that we have just been looking at. The model folder structure follows the usual pattern. The configuration file is in the CFG folder. We want the one with the setback control. In the day DBS folder, there are constructions, but no weather files. And the zone folders include the usual zone geometry, construction, and shading files. We'll need to update those shading files. In this, but we first need to make some changes. So the command window, we go into the model CFG folder and copy the setback model um, configuration file. Let's open the copy in the project manager and have a look. This model includes a mix of open plan and cellular office offices, as well as a service core. Although it's a rather low resolution model, it's got neither furniture and fittings nor internal doors, it has been zoned uh, the various spaces so that performance in different orientations can be accounted for. There are shading fans located on the on three sides of the building and the model includes pre-computed insulation and shading patterns. We've just seen the ground level. This is the first level. The second level includes cellular offices. Level three goes back to open plan spaces and here are the explicit ceilings that are included in the model along with the roof space. 
if we save the model, uh, we can update the documentation in the model. So our assessment goals are essentially we're interested in the extent to which demand patterns change over time as well as capacity of the heating required so that we can make an informed choice of the specifics of the environmental control. This strategic approach differs from defaulting to the usual suspects systems prior to ca characterizing the demand patterns. Conveniently, the environmental controls in this model are implemented by way of ideal zone controls, which are a good match for early design scenario checking. The existing control means 22 degrees inside the rooms with a setback to 17 during weekdays. For weekends, the set points are 16, but also a cooling set point um, set back to 27 degrees. Before we continue, take a moment to consider the assessments needed to characterize the building response to these winter scenarios. A brute force approach might be to run a full winter assessment and then double down on the data mining. A strategic approach might begin by considering how particular building compositions respond to changing boundary conditions. For example, a building approaching passive house standards would respond slowly to ambient temperatures. Indeed, a passive house buildings are noted because of how little internal temperatures drift when environmental controls are set back. They're also insensitive to wind speeds and direction, but would be susceptible to overheating if solar access was not well designed. A high mass masonry construction might be less stressed by solar loads, but pose quite a challenge during the Monday morning startup because of the time needed to warm up the mass of the building. So what is the composition of the test building? If we look in one of the zones, we can inquire about the composition of specific surfaces. So first we look at one of the exterior walls. And it's got a Let's have a look at the thermophysical properties. And we can see that's um, brick, breeze block, some insulation. If we look at an internal floor, we f see that it's a concrete on steel with a carpet on the top. And if we look at one of the lightweight partitions. We see it's essentially jet board with airspace steel studs. So the suspended ceiling and the carpet it isolates the floor mass from the occupied space. High solar loads might not be absorbed by this combination. Facade's not particularly high performance and its limited mass is isolated from the occupied space, so it's likely we will have, it might take quite a bit of heat injection to reach comfortable conditions. ESPR includes the concept of simulation parameter sets. These include the period of the assessment, the time step, as well as the names of the simulation files to be created. Let's work on a parameter set for the cold weekend. We will adapt an existing profile and reset the start date. And we'll look at the name of the results file. Let's set another one. to represent the windy period in January.
and edit its attributes. From the 5th to the 10th of January. And adapt the name of the results file for clarity. And another new set. for the windy period in February. And change the dates of that to the 19th through the 23rd of February. Then we need to add adjust the weather file. We want to select another from the list. There's a review of it, uh, but just to make sure, we'll have a quick look in the Klim module. Yes, that's the one we've been looking at. And notice the uh, Latitude and longitude shown. Jot those numbers down so that we can update the model to match. So we accept the file name change and we go back into the context and locate the latitude and longitude and update them. When we leave the menu, we are asked whether or not uh, to update the shading files, and we agree to that. And in the background, it reruns the shading analysis tool uh, to calculate shading for the various rooms in the model. Once we have set that up, we need to reselect the specific parameter set we would like to use and then ask for a simulation. We have the option of integrated or automatic. We're picking integrated. Initiate the simulation. Yes, that is the results file we want. We can monitor temperatures Let's pick some of the east zones. On several floors. And one of the ceilings. And look at the temperature inside as the simulation progresses. Let's add a note in for the intent of this particular assessment. And there are the temperatures. We see that the temperature in the ceiling certainly drops down much slower than in the, those office spaces. So let's exit the simulator and have a look at the results analysis. We now select results analysis which invokes the other tool with the relevant results file. This is in loaded in. And let's go and choose which building zones to include. Well, let's start with all of the zones and have a look at that. OK, now we go into graphs and parameter plot and temperatures. 
could start with dry bulb temperature and draw that. Now, the roof is a little bit cool. We see that there are some rooms that change temperature relatively slowly, uh, but there's an awful lot of lines there. So let's focus in on the zones on the second level, which is quite a mix. And we select the temperatures and draw the graph. So now we see that there are a few um, overheating situations during the workday and a warm, one more warm space during the weekend. If we add another profile, let's see what the outside weather is. That draws off the graph at the moment, but we'll correct that momentarily. Let's add another profile from the weather side, the direct normal solar. Okay, we see uh, there's solar on the Friday, nothing much over the weekend until a bit on some on Sunday, and then we've got on Monday and Tuesday, uh, there's also solar. So looks like the Sunday slight peak might have to do with solar. Okay. Let's repick all of the zones and look at the aggregate heating in the building and draw that. Okay, now we've got the Friday peak and then we've got Monday, which is much more than on Tuesday and Wednesday. But just to double check, let's look and see how that fits with the startup each morning. And it's quite clear that's what's happening. There's a little bit of a peak as the offices close down. We see there's much less needed in the weekend to maintain the 17 degrees. Clearly, if the setback on the weekend was maybe 15 degrees or something like that, there would be even a more pronounced uh, pattern on the Monday morning. So let's quit the results analysis, go back to simulation and the simulation presets and change our attention to the windy January period and run that simulation. We'll do it automated this time, which basically does it with minimum uh, user interaction. And back to results analysis. And there's the results file we expect to see for that. And assuming all the building zones, we go into the parameter plot and go through a similar situation. Ah, let's focus on the second level because that gave a fairly clear set of lines. Dry bulb temperature, draw that. Okay, now we see, yes, there is a slower fall off um, in the evenings as the set point drops. Let's add another profile, weather and direct normal. Now, we only see that on the Friday um, and on the Wednesday, the other days, mi minimal. And the ambient temperature, relatively constant across that time in those particular spaces. So we do have a slow cooling off into the weekend, and then we, um, not much in the way of overheating, uh, of course, because there's not much sunlight. If we go in and add the aggregate heating, again, we see uh, Monday's much more than the Friday. However, there's not too much difference on the Tuesday and Wednesday um, because uh, 
it wasn't quite so extreme on the outside. Okay, let's go back and to simulation to the last preset, the windy period in February. And we go in the integrated simulation, automated. That runs. And back to results analysis. And that's the file we expect. So back to building zones, select that second level. Graphs, parameter plot, temperatures, and draw that. Okay, we're seeing uh, during the week um, there is this slow cool down on, on most of the nights. And if we add in the solar, we should see that. Well, in fact, there's only one instance of that during the time period. And the dry bulb temperature outside, add that in. And the wind speed as well. OK, so now we've got, uh, we can see the wind speed. Those are the dotted lines. Um, we're getting up to uh, 18 meters a second. Temperature outside fairly constant. Um, there's not too much difference. Let's see what happens if we see what infiltration is actually happening there with that wind speed changing over time. So we do see that the infiltration rate is varying depending on the wind speed outside. And of course, there are many other things that we could look at in results analysis. For example, we could look in the inquire about statistics for all zones. And again, we could see what the, what aggregate heating looks like in terms of statistics. So we've got a maximum of 75 kilowatts mean value of 21. And then for each of the different zones in here, here's my maximum value. Um, so we could get a diversified total on that. And there is energy balances and other things we could look at. So that's been a tour of the climate and project manager and simulation. And I invite you to do your own exploration.